Hey everyone, Shaper1000 here. Today, we got the vet moved over. We got the Toyota sitting here where the vet was. We'll start taking some stuff off this engine. See if I can salvage that can or that uh, that head. Um, man, this thing's this thing's a nightmare. I've been wrenching on it for a little bit. I got the exhaust off because I really couldn't get you guys under there where I had to be. So I hooked a couple things. My goal is, yeah, we had a pack rat up in here too. My goal is to get the intake off of here today we'll see if we can get that done but yeah i had a pack rat it wasn't in here a couple weeks ago because i took a spark plug out of here put in that corvette because i broke one in that corvette it's the same plugs it wasn't like that i opened the hood on this thing man it was just covered i got that's some hoses chewed off and uh, a piece of wire and I don't know where it goes but there's a piece of wire with little wires that kind of look like uh, fuel injector wires but it, it's not they're all good so I'll find out where they're where they came from um, but yeah let's try to get this intake off here now I'm just gonna speed you guys up and you know it's not really a how-to if I run into anything interesting yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, like the cam, there's something I need to talk to you about the cam. I'd like to get them out today too, but um, let's go ahead and get started on this, guys. For something i seen a brand new fuel filter for this thing and i was like i bought one why didn't i put it on i'll tell you why that right down in there that round thing that that's your fuel filter i know we'll just go up underneath mm -hmm. yeah right so i'm going to change that while i've got this off i was going to take See, this will unbolt from the intake, but <clears throat> this is the plenum, but I can't get them broke free, so I'm just going to try to take it all off as a piece and lay it over here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they do this kind of thing. It's like that bolt there. How you going to get to that without taking this off? And this thing, I got one bolt off, and then I broke a couple things. Ah, I threw them down in there, you know, because 12 millimeter, you can't get the 3 h drive on it, so you go with quarter inch and you snap everything. All right, let's get a couple more bolts out of this thing. Let's see if we can get this to lay over, and then we'll yank the cams off of it.
man those look pretty good cool talking about you got to put a 10 millimeter bolt through there this is a split gear and if you take that off them gears will move away from each other and they're real hard to get back together so put that in there if you plan on putting the, the uh, camshafts back in um, I don't think I'm going to but it's just a habit so let me see there's that all right so this is ready to come out I'm gonna put all these cam keepers uh, on on something and put them in a row and that way I'll know which way they go Okay, so this is what I did on the upper cam bearings. The front, intake and exhaust. That way, and then when I clean them, I'll just do one at a time and put them back, and that way I know which way they go. That cam don't actually feel that bad, but... I'll see if I got a micrometer and I'll mic them, see what the specs are supposed to be. But if those cams are good, I'll try to salvage ahead and we'll throw it back together. I've got everything to put it back together. I've got new valves, the whole gasket set and everything like that, except for all the bolts that go around the the valve cover because, well, pack rats. But um, yeah, I got. I don't know if I got these new. Or if I just got the seals, but I may leave them in there. I don't know yet. We'll just have to see. Let me get this stuff put in the truck. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today. I got a bunch of stuff to pick up and put inside the truck. Um, we're pretty close. I got a couple bolts on the back to take off um, for this water hose. I got to take the power steering pump off. Uh... There's an idler adjustment pulley there. I've got to take it off. And, yeah, uh, I'm not sure about the air conditioner yet. I think it's underneath the head, but we'll see. So, a few more things. We're, we'll get on this tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to spray this down with a bunch of uh, stuff I got. This stuff, blaster, multi-purpose lubricant. I'm just going to I did check it make sure it's not stuck it's not stuck so that'll be alright until tomorrow and then uh, hang on trucks going past Okay, so anyway, yeah, we'll uh, we'll jump back on this tomorrow and we'll get this head off of here and see what's going on. I think I think it's got a burnt valve because it does have little or no compression on one cylinder. Because sometimes it would take a couple, well, not minutes, it seems like it, but it'd crank a little longer than usual sometimes to start up. And when it cranked, instead of it going rrr, 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 like that, it would go rrr, 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 rrr. that means at least one cylinder was really low on compression um, I don't think that it's a ring issue it didn't smoke it had no blow by in it so therefore I don't think it's a piston issue because again no blow by um, it could be you know cylinder walls the cylinder walls worn um, but again it's not smoking there's no blow by um, the truck was getting tired but you know half a million miles it could be worn we'll we'll know that once we get these heads off of here 
or this head off then we'll know if because I'm not I'm not gonna have a board out and stuff like that I'll just uh, I'll just get another engine drop down in it um, I'd like to keep this engine in here if we can that's why I'm trying to save the head really I, I'd like to keep the head in it um, you know it's all original it's untouched you know the only thing we've ever done on it other than maintenance like wheels tires brakes not wheels but tires brakes um, oil change and stuff the only thing we've done we've done the, the fuel pump I think that's the original fuel filter which I never changed so we've done a fuel pump uh, we've done an alternator and a radiator and all of it was original so but yeah we'll we'll try to get this head up out of here tomorrow and then um, I'll see what's holding that that intake and plant them on over there because I'd like to at least get it up out of there once the heads off I might be able to bring it up out and get it taken apart and uh, like it should be it'd be easier to put back together that way but you know if not it'll go back together like that you know all one piece just kind of a pain so all right guys thanks for watching we'll do a playlist on this thing um yeah it's time it's time it, it, it needs you know we need to run this thing you know it's bad form to sit especially over there by them weeds yeah that's not good got them damn it's not a sewer rat, you know. It's not mice. It's not squirrels. It's a pack rat. So I still got to figure out. I don't see any wires that have been chewed off. So there, but there is some wires in there that have been chewed off, and they're little, kind of like a sensor wire or something like that. But I have yet to see that. Now I know, I know where the hoses came from. Therefore, the uh, windshield washer fluid. So I got, I got some oxygen hose in there that'll work for that. I don't see any vacuum hoses which is good that are chewed off so but um if we can salvage this head that that would be nice if i can get that spark plug drilled out um that would be nice because then i can at least repair that and uh but but also what i want to do is you know i want to put a new oil pump in it and you know new bearings on the lower end i know i know they're getting the uh, the last time we we ran it to check it or the oil light kept blinking on and off and every once in a while you would hear it tapping up here on the top end so it's like ugh and it's full of oil I mean it's full right now this truck never did leak it's right on the full mark right now so that was you know telling me that. Because what gives you your oil pressure, not only your pump, is um, is the uh, your bearings. Because they don't actually touch metal to metal. When this thing's running, it's actually running on a thin, a very micro thin coat of oil that the pump makes pressure. And when that, when your bearings are good and they're close like they're supposed to be, it's going to build up pressure. 40 pounds whatever 45 pounds whatever the truck needs and um but as they wear you know that that gap gets bigger and bigger it's harder to hold pressure um so i would like to do that but i definitely i want to see why we why it was low on compression on one cylinder because yeah that's and it is a 16 valve so <laughs> so there's a yeah there's four Four, four valves on each cylinder so but yeah we'll see what let's check this out up here man this thing is in excellent shape usually you'll see a divot in these and I'm not seeing it on this that's um Get my glasses.
Yeah. I mean, I could put a straight edge across there and see, but I can tell you right now, that's in still in pretty good shape. Unbelievable the shape that this engine is in. It's unreal. Same way with this one. Because usually they'll dish, dish down. Because that's, that's what the cam pushes on. This slides over top of your valve. And the cam lobe pushes this down, opens the valve. And usually, especially when they've been low on oil, like this truck has, usually you'll see a divot. Now I might see a couple, but that's not going to cause low compression. It'll cause it to run funny, but it's not going to cause low compression. All right, guys, I got to get get cleaned up here and get this stuff picked up. I'm just going to put it in the truck. That way it'll be there for us in the morning. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Shea Bear, the Mr. Man, the Legend, gone for now. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.